all tuning in, this is Optimus Commission with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Toys R Us exclusive Transformers Masterpiece Soundwave. Now, we've taken a look at the Takara one previously. This is the Hasbro version. Now, because I had the Takara one, I never intended on ever picking this one up. But a viewer of mine contacted me and said, hey, Paul, if I buy it and send it to you, would you actually review it? And then when you're done, send it to me. <laughs> and honestly, I said, you know what? If you actually send this to me, let me review it. You're already paying to have the thing shipped to me. I'll flip the bill and, and pay to send it to you. It's the least that I could possibly do for you being nice enough to let me take a look at this. So that's why we have it today. Now, a lot of people have really already said that this is the far superior version of Masterpiece Soundwave because... Number one, you pretty much get everything that the Takara one came with, plus all of the cassettes. So you don't have to buy two additional Masterpiece sets to get all five of his cassettes. And that's a huge plus with this. The biggest problem is finding this in stores. To this day, it's still a hard figure to find in stores, and I don't honestly even know if Toys R Us is stocking more of these. They probably will get some more for Christmas. They'll probably have a lot more. Now, this isn't the first time that we've gotten to cover versions of Masterpiece figures reissued to us through Hasbro, but this is the first time that Hasbro has went ahead and labeled them MPs. We got MP02 here. MP01 is Acid Storm which is a repaint of the MP11 Starscream mold. And you actually got some Chinese right up there, which is really kind of interesting. But the biggest problem people were having with it is, as you can see, Soundwave has yellow eyes, which is more in line with his G1 toy than his actual cartoon counterpart. So we're going to just take a look at this and do a comparison kind of video. So here you have the side of the, the box. You got his tech specs. You got a little bit of a read up up here. We all know pretty much how Soundwave is, so I'm not going to read that to you. But you come around here to the back, you see it comes with Laserbeak, Buzzsaw, Decepticon Rumble, and Decepticon Frenzy. Which, again, is interesting because this being a Hasbro release, they have Rumble in the red coloring and Frenzy being the blue. That's a Takara thing, usually. Hasbro usually names him Rumble and him Frenzy, so that's interesting again. You got Ravage, you got the tape player mode, it includes an Energon Cube, and the figure itself. And then you got a big old Decepticon logo. And then as part of the Thrilling 30, this is figure number nine in that whole series. So that's about it for the packaging. I will say that uh, well, Toys R Us, when you order it online, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but the box is all dented and everything. And that's, that's a complaint that a lot of people have had with these figures that Toys R Us does not do a very good job of shipping these and keeping the actual the packaging in good condition. So if you're a mint and box collector, you're going to have a problem with this. But that's about it for the packaging. As you can see, it is different, but it is a fairly nice packaging. It's pretty thick, and I do like the way that it looks. And as an alternative to the Takara one, the box here really is very nice. So that's about it for the, uh, the packaging. And now, without further ado, let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Hasbro Soundwave open up and out of its packaging. And, and honestly, there was really not much different between this set and what you get if you bought the MP13, 14, and 15. You buy those three, and you basically have this right here at a stupid fraction of the cost. And for people that are on a, on a tighter budget, this is an absolute perfect figure to get. Now, starting things off first, as you can see, he does come with the, the small replica of Megatron, which, uh, again, is exactly the same. There, there is no difference that I can tell uh, that this is the MP13 version. I mean, exactly the same weapon here. Um, the, the, the paint job's identical. Uh, all these p pieces do also remove just like on the original one, so... Again, everything is identical when it comes to this little miniature Megatron. And honestly, I do have to keep these separate because I don't want to get them mixed up. Although I guess it really doesn't matter too much. But you also did see that it does slide to allow for a, a figure such as Soundwave or, or maybe Starscream to hold them. So as you can see, those are the exact same. Now he does come with the little grid thing right here. You can kind of see the grid now. It, it doesn't come with any of the, the images that you could put underneath it when you would put it on a chest kind of replicate like the nemesis or, or anything like that but you do have this and that is included which is really very nice you also do get the energon cube which uh, as far as i can tell is exactly the same a lot of my extra pieces for my mp13 are in storage but uh, i mean i know this is the exact same this is the exact same it also opens you can also still peg this 
on here you can also then take this and put that on the chest so this is all the exact same that we got with the mp13 figure so setting that off to the side uh you do have well, frenzy and rumble or rumble and frenzy whatever you do still have their weapons as you can see they do have the gun still in here now the only one that i have out uh, for my mp13 is actually uh, rumble and bringing his his in uh the only difference that i'm seeing is that the the hasbro one does have a slightly lighter coloring than these uh, the guns are the exact same they're they're both painted so that's there's nothing different but you can see that the, the biggest difference would be just a, a little bit darker of a bluish purple coloring i would almost imagine that the uh, the red one is probably the same this is probably a little bit lighter but uh, you do get it you also do get the little bit right here that you can peg them together you can see me take them off here on on this guy's uh i mean so you do still have all that <laughs> nothing changes there if I can actually get this on there properly. There you go. And you do also have that same bit right down here. Uh, again, it's the silver plastic. You can then take this, peg this uh, right in here if you want to. Then come around here. And that pegs on the side uh, exactly like the, the Takara one did. So, again, just everything that we got in three different Masterpiece releases through Takara is represented here with the Hasbro one, which is amazing. Now, one of the other differences is the cassettes. As you can see, they do come with the cases as well. But these cases are these, uh, well, it's kind of a clear, uh, kind of a cloudy clear plastic. Whereas the Takara ones were a, a pinkish, which I, I kind of like the pinkish ones a little bit better because like I showed in that video, you can then take these, just take these out. You can stack them like so and make it look like a, a pack of like compressed Energon cubes. I really did like that. So these are the exact same. The, the individual cassettes, as you can see, this is the Hasbro one. And again, the Takara one just is a little bit darker of a paint job. Uh, it's really very impressive. You can see this is a little bit more yellow. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see that a little bit better. The, the Hasbro one's a little bit more yellow, whereas this is a little bit more orangish. But the uh, the silver is no, the the silver is the exact same. You come around here to the bottom, and again that same coloration continues here with the the yellowish color for Buzz on the more orange color for for him. Obviously the transformation is the exact same, so transforming these guys really quick. And again you see the same coloration applies here in the actual bird mode. Whereas this is a much, much more yellow looking character than Buzz saw here, which is a much more orange looking character. One thing that I will say is that, uh, and and this is again the one of the problems i guess when you mass produce things a little bit more as time goes by things get a little bit looser so like this is uh, a little bit looser when i compare it to how tight the the articulation is on this uh, and that's true on all the, the the joints on here it just feels a hair looser not bad i mean you you can see i mean it's it's not falling down or anything but you can feel a, a slight difference in the tension when you're rotating some of these joints and things like that. So that's definitely something to, to, to bear in mind when you're comparing the two different figures. But beyond that, uh, it actually still has kind of the same sloppy paint applications that uh, the original buzzsaw had, like around the beak where there's a little bit of bleed from the, from the paint or whatever. You, you also have that a little bit here. Well, that's a little bit crisper there, but that side's a little bit sloppy. So, um, but the, as you can see, there you have buzzsaw. And up next, we have laser beak. And, and honestly, laser beak looks exactly the same. I don't see any paint differences really at all. It looks like it's the exact exact same tone the same red uh, and then you come around here to the back and, and again uh, very similar looking I don't, I don't see any real paint differences at all between these two so this one's going to be tough to not get confused but for um, obviously his his cassette mode this is what you're looking at and much like Buzz saw that here we have him in his his condor mode or whatever you want to call him and again uh, almost an exact recreation uh, well maybe maybe this is a little bit lighter like the red on here looks like it might be a little bit lighter of a red just like a smidge than the uh, original Takara one but Almost, if you're not, if you don't have these side by side, and even looking at them side by side on the camera, you don't really notice it all that much. But in hand, you, you can see it. It's minor, and like I said, if you don't have these in hand next to each other, you're probably not going to notice the difference at all. And that's that's wonderful. I, I really do appreciate that. That's very cool. Now next, we have Ravage, and uh, again, uh, much like what we saw with Laserbeak, there's very, very different between these two. Uh, almost 
undistinguishable to the naked eye. Uh, looking at well, the the, the backside here, I, I, I'm I'm trying to look at the. It, it really kind of looks like this gray is the same, but the inner gray here kind of looks like the the Hasbro ones a hair darker. Um, but uh, again, I can't really. Uh, visually see much of a difference between these two uh, they, they are in my opinion exactly the same so <laughs> good luck trying to tell the differences between these two and again here in the 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 animal mode uh, again there is very little difference uh to the point where i cannot with my eye see any kind of difference with these two different figures uh they, they look identical uh, again the one thing i will note is that the limbs do feel a little bit looser in some areas um Kind of here in the foot, it's a little bit floppy, uh, mostly in this one right here. Um, but everything else, on like the Takara one, very stiff joint still. It's just very possible that this is a little bit looser due to the fact that it's more mass produced than the Takara one. But beyond that, again, identical looking alternate modes as well as the animal modes. Now when we come to a Frenzy or Rumble, whatever you want to call them, to me, this is always Rumble because of my cartoon like for the character. There is a little bit more differences that you're noticing here. Uh, you can see that the Hasbro one is a little bit lighter of a color. Uh, it also doesn't have this number. I mean, you see a little number stamped right on there on the Takara one. The Hasbro one does not have that. So really kind of interesting. Then you come around here to the back, and then, again, the lighter color does still continue on. The, the, the chrome now has been replaced with just a silverish kind of paint, but you have the nice chrome here on the Takara one, and honestly, I think that looks a lot better. It's it's a lot more vibrant. You got a little chrome bit right there as well, so that's really nice. The other thing that I'm noticing is that the Hasbro one went ahead and replaced the screws. Uh, the screws here are now silver, whereas the screws on the Takara one are black. That's also something that I noticed with Soundwave that we'll get to in a little bit, but for the cassette, that's really about it that you're noticing, uh, just a slight paint difference. But again, nothing that's really, oh God, I hate the way that that one looks. And again, coming to the robot mode, you can see where the, the Hasbro one has the lighter color as well. Uh, they both have the, the yellow bits here, but the Takara one has the chrome knee bits. Uh, on, well, not even the knee, just the shin, whereas the Hasbro one just has the, the regular silver point paint. It's not bad looking by any stretch of the imagination. Both of them look terrific. It's just kind of personal preference. This does have a more premium kind of look to it because of the chrome, but if, if you can look past that, honestly, you're, you're not getting really much different. Uh, for me, though, I, I do like the little bit of chrome that this figure has, but the coloring on this one, I think, looks a little bit better. I like the lighter shade of uh, well, purplish blue on here than on the actual Takara one. And then again, you come around here to the back and it's the exact same. So uh, for Rumble or Frenzy, whatever you want to call them, that's basically what you're looking at. And coming to the last of his minions, here we have, well, who I look at is Frenzy, the, the, the red one. <laughs> and again, you can see that the Takara one has the little number system thing on here as well as the black screws, whereas the Hasbro one doesn't have it, and they have the silver screws. It, it's just the minor changes that I've noticed on here. Uh, the color is, it's a little bit darker from from what I'm noticing here on the on the Hasbro one. It's a little bit tougher to tell and then when you come ar around here to the back again you can see that the Takara one does have the the gold chrome whereas this just has well kind of goldish paint but uh, the the plastic on it really the, again very minimal in terms of a difference without again having these in hand you probably want to be able to tell the difference. Uh, it's just a very, very slight uh, red coloring between the Hasbro and the Takara one. And then coming to the robot mode uh, for the for the red guy. Again, you can see the biggest difference mostly being in the, the actual gold chrome that the Takara one has. One thing that I'd like to note that a lot of people seem to have a problem with previously is the, uh, the torso would collapse a lot of times and not stay up. Uh, both of these, Rumble and Frenzy, whichever one you want to call which, have had, at least on this version, pretty sturdy waists so they don't flop down or anything like that. So that's a nice improvement. But uh, again, a little bit looser of a, of a joint. Uh, whereas the one on the Takars are still very stiff and really secure. But uh, again, mostly the biggest difference that you're going to no notice, at least in terms of the red guy here, is the gold chrome, whereas this Hasbro version just has the gold paint. Uh, but again, the red is just 
a hair darker on the Hasbro, just a, a smidge. You might not even be able to tell it on the camera in person. You probably will, but very minimal. And finally, here we come to the actual Soundwave figure itself. And much like everything else that comes with the Hasbro version, this particular figure is very, very similar to what we got with the Takara one. Furthering the whole belief that, honestly, most people that got the Takara one are probably kicking themselves because of just how exact the recreation is. So, as you can see, you have everything here. I do have the little uh, plug thing in here. Uh, you, you, this, this is basically what it is. There are very minor differences here. So, for comparison, here is the Hasbro version, and here's the Takara one. And, again... Uh, almost indistinguishable t between the two. The only thing that I really can even see is again, the Takara one goes with the black screws that you can see right here, whereas the Hasbro one has the silver ones. It, it fits a little bit better with the, the paint here, I, I really think. Uh, but the black screws here kind of fit with this, so it's really kind of personal preference. The other thing that I'm noticing is that the compartment that stores Rumble and Frenzy's guns that are actually on the feet, it's so hard to tell because it's so similar. But this is actually, on the Takara one, a nice painted silver, whereas this is a very kind of off-white. That really is about it, and, and, and again, it's not going to come across very well on camera. You can kind of see it there. In hand, you're going to notice it a whole lot more. But beyond that, seriously, I, I really, <laughs> that's all I can really see in terms of the differences. It, it's amazing to me how, uh, how similar they are, and it's, yeah, definitely making me feel kind of stupid for going out and buying the, the whole Takara set by itself. Now, granted, a lot of people never on honestly expected that we would get a, a Masterpiece Soundwave released here in the United States. At least I didn't. A lot of people that I talked to that have connections to uh, folks overseas told me over and over again that uh, Hasbro was really very reluctant to actually sell this figure here because as, as a toy still, most kids nowadays don't know what a cassette player is. So I, I, don't, I don't think they were too uh, convinced that it would sell well. But it... <laughs> They, they're definitely proven wrong. Now, it does still have the same gimmick where you push the, the little button here at the top, and it opens up the chest piece, and then again, you can put that all the way in. You come around here, and you still have the same button that allows it to eject various cassettes and things like that. The uh, buttons here, the forward and rewind buttons, you can still push in on both of the Hasbro and Takara one. You do have on the side here the little uh, sliding doodad right there come around to this other side and you do have a little uh, i'm guessing a volume switch that barely moves but it's still there so uh, but, uh, but that's it <laughs> uh, the only two differences really are the screws that i'm seeing and the uh the the bits on the feet so that's all you're noticing here in the actual cassette player mode now the robot mode <laughs> literally also doesn't have anything that's ridiculously different there is only one change that really is designed to change the uh, the look of this figure and that is the eyes zooming in so that you can see that the Hasbro one elected to go with the yellow eyes which is accurate to the original G1 toy the Takara one maintains the red eyes which we saw in the cartoon now, despite everything else being the exact same, for the most part, just with, you know, small little minor differences that really don't change the look drastically, this has really caused a lot of, well, not controversy, but debate, I, I, I guess you could say. Uh, which one do you want to get? And, and honestly, I love the red eyes. The, that is what I prefer on my figure. But if you're not able to get the Takara one, because this figure by itself is like $250, and each cassette that set was like $60. So you're looking at roughly $370 for this guy. When this one is only, as I said, I think about $120 if you can find them in your local Toys R Us. I mean, it's like a third of the price. It's, it's, I'm sorry, it's like two thirds the price. I mean, I, like, don't get me wrong. I love the way that the red eyes look on here, but seriously, this thing there is absolutely no reason why somebody should not get this. If you're turned off because of the eyes, I don't, I don't even know what I could possibly tell you. I mean, here in the next couple days, I'm going to take a look at the Repro label set, which actually does give him red eyes. So you could buy that. You could buy a, you know, some red paint. I mean, there, there's so many different options that you can do that's ridiculously cheaper than buying just the Takara one. 
I mean, it, like I said, everything is exactly the same. There's there's bits on here that are a little bit different. I, I shouldn't keep saying exactly the same. That's that's not the right word I should be using. But there is literally no reason why somebody should pass on this because they want to have this one. It's th This is an absolute waste of money. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. And I do have a great amount of regret for spending that much money on that. But as I said, we didn't know that we were going to be getting this. Now, that argument that, you know, don't spend the money on this and wait for the Hasbro one, while it's kind of a valid argument, I don't want to see people using that for, like, an, an excuse. I'm seeing that a lot now with, well, for for example, the, the Lambor, the Masterpiece uh, Sideswipe figure, and I'm seeing it a lot now with the new Masterpiece Prowl and Blue Streak. A lot of people are saying, nah, you know what, I'm not going to get that, I'm going to hold off and I'm going to wait for the Hasbro one. There's not a, a guarantee that we're going to get the Hasbro one. So that being said, I don't want anybody to miss out on these great figures because they're waiting around. If this figure never came out, this would be the only way to get him. And it's still a perfectly acceptable figure in that case. Just because this one comes around kind of makes that one, like I said, seem more, well, useless. This is just a top-notch figure. The quality feels exactly what it felt like on the Takara one. Uh, you come around here to the back, you can even see that the back panels here are painted silver, so that carries through. Um, it, like, like I said, the only difference is it some of it is cosmetic, uh, like the silver screws as opposed to the black ones, but those aren't designed to really change the look of the figure. The only thing that really is designed to do that is the eyes. This guy is just absolutely phenomenal and absolutely worth picking up. See how that you get everything that the MP13, 15, and 16 came with? There is no doubt that this is absolutely the better value and better deal. As I mentioned many times already, the biggest problem is finding this guy in stores. Scalpers really have taken advantage of a lot of people and really have bought these left and right and then turn around and completely overcharge people for them. I really do think that with the holiday season coming up, Hasbro will probably get this out more, and hopefully the scalper thing won't be as much of a problem. But this set is terrific. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I would like to thank Edwin for sending this out to me to allow me to share with the rest of you guys. I hope you enjoyed the look at the Hasbro version, the one and only Soundwave, exclusively only at Toys R Us. And until next time, this has been Optibotomous saying thank you for tuning in. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.